the boys and girls. We're going to be talking about another genre today, and the genre we're doing today is called historical fiction. It's one of my favorite genres, and we're going to read a historical fiction story. Now, historical fiction is a make-believe story. It's fiction, but it takes place in a historical time period. And some characters in the story might be made up fictional characters, but some characters might be real historical people. Some events might be made up, but some events may have really happened. The cool thing about historical fiction is you can see what it would be like to live in a different time period. What it would be like to live in the pioneer days or in medieval times, or on the Titanic. They're so neat because they take you back to a different time and you learn real facts about that time while you're reading the book. The historical fiction book we're gonna to read today is called The Oxcart Man. This is by Donald Hall and pictures by Barbara Cooney. It's a Caldecott Award winner. That means it won Best Pictures of the Year. And this historical fiction book is set in pioneer days. Now, as we read, think about different things that you're learning about that historical time period. How is it different than our time now? How do people live differently? In October, he backed his ox into his cart and he and his family filled it up with everything they made or grew all year long that was left over. He packed a bag of wool he sheared from the sheep in April. He packed a shawl his wife wove on the loom from yarn spun at the spinning wheel from the sheep sheared in April. He packed five pairs of mittens his daughter knit from the yarn spun at the spinning wheel from the sheep sheared in April. He packed candles the family made. He packed linen made from flax they grew. He packed shingles he split himself. He packed birch brooms his son carved with a borrowed kitchen knife. I wonder why he's packing all that stuff. Did you notice where it all comes from? Stuff he and his family makes or they grow. Right? And he's packing it up in his wagon. He packed potatoes he dug from their garden, but first he counted out potatoes enough for all winter and potatoes for seeds the next spring. He packed a barrel of apples, honey and honeycomb, turnips and cabbages, a wooden box of maple sugar from the maples they tapped in March when they had boiled and boiled and boiled the sap away. He packed a bag of goose feathers that his children collected from the barnyard geese. When his cart was full, he waved goodbye to his wife and his daughter and his son, and he walked at his ox's head for 10 days over hills, through valleys, by streams, past villages. Where is he going? What do you think he's going to do with all that stuff? Wow, would you walk for 10 days? Look, he got to town, walking for 10 days just to get to town. That's a long way. Until he came to Portsmouth and the Portsmouth Market. He sold the bag of wool. 
He sold the shawl his wife made. He sold five pairs of mittens. He sold candles and shingles. He sold birch brooms. He sold potatoes. He sold apples. He sold honey and honeycomb, turnips and cabbages. He sold maple sugar and he sold a bag of goose feathers. What was he doing with all that stuff? He's taking it in to sell. That's how he gets money, right? Then he sold the wooden box that he carried the maple sugar in. He sold the barrel he carried the apples in. He sold the bag he carried the potatoes in. And then he sold his ox cart. And then he sold his ox and kissed him goodbye on the nose. Oh, that's sad. Then he sold his ox's yoke and harness. And with his pockets full of coins, he walked through the Portsmouth market. He bought an iron kettle to hang over the fire at home. And for his daughter, he brought an embroidery needle that came from a boat in the harbor that had sailed all the way from England. And for his son, he bought a barlow knife for carving birch brooms with. And for the whole family, he bought two pounds of wintergreen peppermint candy. Sounds like he's buying things that they can't make on the farm to take back with him. Then he walked home with the needle and the knife and the wintergreen peppermint candies tucked into the kettle and a stick over his shoulder stuck through the kettle's handle and coins still in his pocket. Past farms and villages, over hills, through valleys, by streams, until he came to his farm, and his son and his daughter and his wife were waiting for him. And his daughter took her needle and began stitching, and his son took his barlow knife and started whittling. And they cooked dinner in their new kettle. And afterward, everyone ate a wintergreen peppermint candy. And that night, the ox cart man sat in front of his fire, stitching a new harness for the baby ox in the barn. And he carved a new yoke and sawed planks for a new cart and split shingles all winter. See the baby ox? Right there he is. While his wife made flax into linen all winter and his daughter embroidered linen all winter and his son carved Indian brooms from birch all winter, and everybody made candles. And in March, they tapped the sugar maple trees and boiled and boiled the sap down. Do you know what they're making? How you make maple syrup, you take sap from the tree boil it a lot and you get syrup. And in April, they sheared the sheep and spun the yarn and wove and knitted. And in May, they planted potatoes and turnips and cabbages. 
while apple blossoms bloomed and fell, while bees woke up and started to make new honey. And the geese squawked in the barnyard, dropping feathers as white as cloud. And that's the end. Did you learn anything about how life was different in this time period? Even though it's a fiction story and it's made up, there's real events that happen in here, like people used to grow a lot of their own food and make a lot of their own things they used. You couldn't just drive a car to town, could you? What do you have to do? You had to walk or take a horse or an ox. There's all different things we can learn from historical fiction books. I love this Oxcart Man book. I hope you enjoyed it too.